Lincoln University. I'm Mona Salyer with the uh, admissions office and I want to welcome you to our information session for the Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Administration program which is specifically designed for working adults uh, to either do that one night a week in Kingsport or Knoxville as well as 100% online. So we'll give it just a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. I coordinate the program. If you're not a King employee, who else do we have with us? Anyone want to introduce themselves? Okay, I think I recognize a couple of folks on here. Um, well, that's good. Get, again, if we could give it just a, another minute or two. We have some more joining us, so we'll go ahead and get started. What I want to draw your attention to very quickly for those of us, those who just joined, um, we are uh, here at King University. I'm Mona Salyer with the Enrollment Management Department. Just want to draw your attention to the chat box at the bottom. We want this to be very interactive for this information session about the Bachelor of Science and Healthcare Administration program at King. Um, if you have a question, feel free to go ahead and, um, you know, submit that either through your chat box or you can just unmute and let us know what you, you know, what questions you have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send out to you here in just a second the, um, let's go ahead and get my information out to you and you're going to be hearing from some other folks as well. So this is my contact information. You've got my email address. So I do want to encourage you to, to follow up later. It looks like we've got some more folks on. If you have any questions. Uh, we have someone who's going to be reaching out to you as well and encourage you to share your information because what we'll do is follow up with some great details. We just want you to relax and listen tonight, ask questions, and then we'll follow up with all the details to just reiterate what we've gone over. Right now, I want to introduce to you Dr. Sherry McRae. She is the Program Director for the Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Administration at King University. I'm going to let her introduce herself, tell you a little bit about her, and also we have another faculty member with us, Dr. Margaret uh, McKnight, and we'll go ahead and, and let Sherry do that introduction. I'm sorry, Dr. Margaret Knight. <laughs> Sherry, you're muted. <laughs> All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. As Mona said, I'm Sherry McRae. I coordinate the BSHA program here at King University, and I've done that for approximately six years. This program first started in the fall of 2012, and to date we've had a 232 graduates. So we certainly want to expand that, and hopefully some of you who are on tonight want to be in the next group of graduates. Among those have been students who've had a background in healthcare, and also students who've had no healthcare experience prior to starting the program. So it's a program that works for anyone, regardless of healthcare experience. So it opens many doors. The um, more education that you get and you obtain, the more opportunities you're gonna have in the workplace. Some of the examples of career pathways that students have taken. One is a nursing home administrator in South Carolina now. He started out with no healthcare background and completed this program and then did the requirements to become a nursing home administrator. Another example is a student who started out in retail and she started the program, got a job in a physician's office and by the time she graduated she was promoted to office manager. Several of our students continue on to graduate school, roughly 60% pursue their graduate degree, whether that be an MBA, an MPH, PA school, um, health informatics, a variety of different pathways once this degree is completed. The content that is included 
in the courses in this program is useful content that students come back almost the next day and say, I use this very thing that we talked about in class the night before, or if they're in the online format that they learned that week in that module. So I feel sure that the content is relevant to today's volatile healthcare world. It's an ever-changing environment and we keep up with the current information so that we can pass that along to our students. Many of the part-time faculty are um, current healthcare leaders, whether they be the CEO of a hospital, that person comes and teaches the leadership class occasionally, the CFO of another facility has taught the finance class. So my point with that is that we have experienced instructors in the classroom who are practicing in the healthcare administration world on a day-to-day -day basis. So more real life examples and up-to-date information that also provides a great networking opportunity for students. Many times the part-time faculty who are employed at various healthcare organizations help students secure positions after they have graduated. Some of the courses contained in the program include, there's a course in healthcare policy, one in quality management, epidemiology, population-based health, communication, human resources, health informatics, marketing, ethics and legal issues, research and evidence-based practice, so that gives you some idea of the topics that are covered during the 16 month program. So in only 16 months, and that flies by so quickly, it seems like students will start and before you can even blink, that 16 months has just passed by. It's not like you're stuck and feel like it just drags on and on. It really goes by quickly. The face-to-face -face classes are one night a week in Kingsport. They meet on Wednesday evenings. And in Knoxville, they meet on Monday evenings, 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. So one night a week, four hours. That's the only time that face-to-face -face students have to attend class. And those same courses are offered 100% online as another option. Classes, regardless if it's face-to-face -face or online, are five weeks each. So students only have to think about one topic at a time. Instead of having three running concurrently for 15 weeks, students only have to think about that one subject, the one textbook, due dates for that one course at a time. So five weeks and it's over, and then the next one started. So there are a total of 12 courses in the program. Again, that spans over 16 months, five weeks each. The professors in the healthcare administration program love adult learners. Dr. Knight and I have both been adult learners ourselves multiple times, so we truly get what it means to need that flexible schedule, need the support of faculty. We also realize that as an adult, things come up, whether it be work issues, children issues, parent issues, personal issues, and we work with you to work all around that so that you are supported throughout the program. And I'm gonna stop there for just a second. And I know that we have at least two past students on with us. We have Kay Fry, and Kay did part of the program online. She actually did one class in Knoxville, a few at Kingsport and online. So she's had a sample of all three locations. And we also have Vassier with us, who is the nursing home administrator I was telling you about. So I'm gonna let Kay speak for a moment and give you her viewpoint from being in the program and being an adult student herself. So, Kay? I really liked the flexibility of being able to do just the one class every five weeks. It helped focus because it is such a shortened class. You really dig in depth into the subject matter. So it was very nice to just be able to focus on that one part at a time. 
Uh, I have since gone on and I will graduate from UT Memphis in December with my master's in healthcare informatics. I never really knew that I liked the informatics world in healthcare until I went through the bachelor's program at King. Uh, so as soon as I graduated, I wasn't quite ready to jump back in to the deep end again. So I waited about a year and the difference is with my master's program right now, I am taking a full semester, but I've still only taken like one or two classes a semester, which is about 15 weeks. But it does show you other aspects of the healthcare world where I had been in radiology for 30 some years. You get kind of, I don't know what word I'm trying to. A sampling of all of the, the different. Yeah, you get to see what's topics. really going on out away from your own little. Silo. Environment, yeah. So it was very interesting. I was very glad I did it. It showed my children who were getting ready to start college that, hey, you can do this. And it gave them a, a bar that they felt like they could could do well in it as well, so. Exactly. Thank you, Kay. Bossier, would you like to add anything to that? Um, I introduced you a moment ago before you even showed up and told them your success story. So, Bossier attended the classes in Knoxville, went through the entire 16 month program. And like I said, it goes by so quickly. So do you want to share some thoughts? Mm, well, it kind of, Sure. Uh, well, it's been definitely a um, uh, a game changer. The experience um, prepares you for uh, what is to come, the real world, really. So, you know, there's one thing between, um, from my experience, you know, there's there's something called education, and there's something called experience. You know, there's they're two total things. You know, actually taking that theory that we've been educated on and actually putting into uh, application or make, making it happen is, 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 is intriguing, but at the same time, it's, um, it's an eye opener. Um, so it works and, you know, the education you're getting there uh, is fantastic. You know, you, you have that, um, that awesome preparation. Uh, but however, when you get into the real world, you know, uh, it feels like sometimes you get hit by a bus. Um, uh, and um, really, ex education is powerful. You know, it, it prepares you mentally, emotionally. Uh, but whenever you get in the field, um, you know, there, there's you realize, oh my gosh, there's there's a lot more, and it's really not necessarily it's intimidating, but it's humbling. It begins as a humbling experience, and the more you dig into it, the more you realize, oh my goodness, I'm so not prepared for for what's coming and i mean you're and as you're struggling through and as you're moving on as you're fighting on you're getting more experience you become more um you know, str yeah definitely stronger and more um uh, kind of stamina grows and the more punishment you get you know from from from, from the field the tougher you become and before you know it, you know, you see people in, in your healthcare facility that look up to you and like, oh my goodness, I don't know how you did it. And, you know, and that's very encouraging. It's like, oh, wow, people look up to me, you know, and that is super encouraging. And it feels like, and, and as you look, kind of look back and you think, wow, two years ago, I was in that classroom kind of, or I was at Starbucks doing those um, Sherry papers and Dr. Knight's papers, you know, uh, day in and day out. And today I have this opportunity or a possibility, blessed beyond measures, you know, to be um, leading a team, you know, of nurses, a team of, of a, a healthcare facility. That definitely is a, um, it's a, a phenomenal experience. But yes, you have to start, you got to start there and you have to, um, um, well, push forward and be optimistic. Do you think the courses contained in the program have prepared you for your current role? Yes, 
there are, okay, my current role, well, I'm a, a long-term, I'm a nursing home administrator. I'm licensed in the state of Tennessee and state of South Carolina. Um, I believe what we did is we got a general touch overview of what healthcare uh, really kind of prepares you generally speaking. And once you get into the field, you get to deal with a lot, of, in, in my case, with a lot of, since it's a long-term care industry, I deal with a lot of um, post-acute care residents. And we call them residents, but I call them patients because they've been here for 15, some of them 20 years, you know, and they're still receiving the daily care. So somewhat, yes, you know, you, you get an idea, but then you, you deal with uh, precise things like how does Medicaid and Medicare works? How do we get paid? You know, mm -hmm. from a financial standpoint, this point, the game is different. However, when it comes from a leadership, a leadership is just definitely covers covers everything. You know, leadership or management, economics. Uh, yes, that theory is there, but in in my world, I deal with a lot of um, precise things. You know. MDS, let's say we, we did take a course in coding and we are using minimum data set to submit to the um, to um, Medicaid and Medicare and that's how we get paid. So really kind of understanding the concept of the long-term industry uh, is super important as you know. Um, what, what we did in our course, we touched, um, we touched slight touch-ups but not as specific as you would probably uh, anticipate in the long-term care industry. We did the acute care probably, but I have, what I'm dealing with on a daily basis is definitely slightly different. However, the concept is there. Does that make sense, Sherry? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you speak to that? How you've used what you've learned from the program in your current role and also your, your um, pursuit of your master's degree it's amazing to me how you start building you get these building blocks and like he said you touch on so many different aspects of healthcare management and for a five-week class you know that doesn't seem like long but you do pretty you dig into the subject matter fairly well and with the time lapse between my graduation from King to my starting my program at UT it amazed me how much I remembered and how much I've been able to build on that basic knowledge that I got with my bachelor's degree through King and that program and I think that's what it does. It, it gives you your basics. It gives you that foundation that you have to have to proceed further. Could I have gotten the job that I wanted with getting my bachelor's? Probably not. Um, that's what pushed me to move forward. But after going through the bachelor's program and seeing how well I did and getting the confidence that yes I can do this gave me what I needed as far as confidence to proceed to a master's program. So those blo building blocks are very very important regardless of what you want to do when you finish with your bachelor's degree. Yeah, and Kay, you touched on earlier how you really didn't understand the world of healthcare informatics until you took that course. And then that gave you that passion and excited you about a subject that you didn't know that much about. And I've seen that happen with many students where epidemiology is a great example that they didn't know what it was before, but then they end up pursuing their master's in public health. So each of those 12 two. courses just had to resonate. Two. I chose between the informatics and the the epidemiology because I was so it was the hardest class I think I had in your program but it was also the most rewarding and just it was a really exciting class to take it was a very difficult decision to decide which route that I would go 
but I felt like within the radiology department and I really didn't want to leave the company that I was with. Right. Which meant I needed to get more to move up in the company itself. So the healthcare informatics, I mean, we, you know, run an HIE program, we're an ACO, all these things that deal with all this data collection. So to pursue my master's in informatics just made more sense at that time. Yes, that's a, a great way to explain that. Dr. Knight, would you like to add anything that I may not have touched on? Well, as I was listening to Vasha talk, hi Vasha, it's nice to see you again. Um, I was thinking about teaching him and his brothers uh, here in Knoxville. And we did actually bring in uh, uh, the examples from long-term care, but because we are teaching people who can go in so many different directions, the best thing is to give them a decent core of information on how healthcare works in the United States and um, other places actually, and how all of that is going to happen for them in terms of leadership and epidemiology and all of the different aspects of healthcare in the US, including population health and including the latest legislative and ethical concerns and so forth. The best way to handle all of that is to give a really good core. And I think that's what the one thing that our program does so well is that it gives that that core to people so that they can then take that and do what Kay's doing and doing what Bosch is doing, which is to find their niche mm -hmm. somewhere in some, some particular part of that whole large thing that is healthcare administration. And uh, that's really what it's about is finding, you know, what's important to you personally and then going in that direction. But you will have the tools to do that. In fact, I talk to my students a lot about filling a toolbox so that they can leave with those things in place for them to go forward and do the work that they really are called to do. And, and that's what's important. Um, and so, yeah, we do get very deeply into each topic, but it is totally with the intention of giving people a set of tools and principles and so forth that they can then use in their own good work. So I guess that's the only thing I would really add to it because you described the program excellently. And I think the feedback from the two students has, has really helped to fill that out. That's great additional content. So with the remaining time, I'm going to turn it back over to Mona to talk a bit about the cost and the admissions process. And then if any, prospective students have questions, we'll be happy to take those too. So, Mona? Yes, thank you, Sherry, and thank you so much. This has been some great information. Um, what I wanted to speak to as far as the cost, we do have, as I mentioned, the program face-to-face. Uh, -face. The semester hour cost for that is $2.90 a semester hour. When you look at the online, that is, um, it's, it, that was running at three oh five plus $100 technology fee per course. So it is a little bit more with the online. But one of the things I wanted to, to speak to, and maybe I need to come back to you, Sherry, on this, is, you know, how do the, we've talked about and I, the folks here who are primarily face-to-face, -face, but how the online students network and are engaged? Yes, that's a great question, Mona. And Kay may have some things to add about that because she's seeing both sides from the student perspective. But Dr. Knight and I, along with the part-time faculty, make sure that we are, our accessibility to our online students is the, same level as it is to our face-to-face -face students. Even if we need to Zoom or if they're local to one of us and she's in Knoxville and I'm in Bristol, we'll meet with a student and if we need to go over anything or if a student is further away geographically, we can do a Zoom meeting. And several of the part-time faculty also do Zoom meetings in their courses and are just online at certain times so that if students have questions, they can pop in and ask them. But Students are able to network and talk with one another through discussion boards. There are group projects that get them involved so that they get to know each other better. Um, Kay, do you have anything to add? Did you feel as connected with your online classes as your face-to-face -face for the most part? I really did. Um, you know, with Zoom and all the, all the technology that we have available, 
it makes it easier to do the online courses as far as feeling connected with your professors, with your other students in the class. We had several group projects that, you know, were grouped together and we have uh, discussion boards, like you said, and we have go to meetings or zoom meetings. There's several different software applications that allow you to do what we're doing right now. So as far as feeling out of touch, no. Uh, and I would be hard pressed to make a decision as to which I liked best because mm -hmm. I enjoyed both aspects of it, the online as well as the the face to face. But being that my UT in, is in Memphis, online has definitely uh, been this entire adventure with my master's program. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Kay. That, that's great information. Um, one of the things that we'll do and follow up with uh, anyone who's online here tonight listening is that we will follow up with some great details. We have a one-page fact sheet um, that's kind of a FAQ. We'll, we'll tell you a lot about, um, you know, these details of program costs and, you know, how it's divided up. Um, I wanted to to mention one more thing while we still have the students online, and I don't know that I've got someone online that I've been working with and it's going to be coming in for this summer, and I, I'm sure that uh, having family, and I know she's got a daughter going away to college this this fall, is if you could speak to how you're able to balance, um, you know, the, the schoolwork, the work, the family, you know, what was that like for you all, uh, Kay and Basha? I'll speak to that. Um... It was honestly nice to have that time where I can just shut the door, turn the phones off, and focus on my classwork or my Zoom meeting with my fellow students. I was taking care of my elderly mother at the time. I had two kids in high school. I had a niece that lives with me. She was in elementary school. I was working a full-time job. You know, I'm very active in my church. My husband and I, you know, still were able to do things. I cannot think of anything I had to miss of any of my children's football games, band competitions, you know, because it gives you the flexibility to work on it when you can. I like to stay up late. Um, Anytime I was off work or, you know, weekends, I'd stay up late and get my work done. And it was quiet and peaceful and, you know, the distractions from everyday life just wasn't there. So it, it was a nice break just to get away and be able to focus on, on the classwork. Thank you, and I think that that's really good information for um, my student to hear. Um, so that's that's very good to know. Another thing that we're going to follow up with for those who are, are listening tonight is financial aid information. I know that's a big concern. You know, what is there to support you in, in, in financial options? We'll follow up with details about that, and we'll walk you through and help you navigate that as well. To apply, simply apply.king.edu for anyone who hasn't applied and would be interested in doing that. And of course, because you visited the, the info session tonight, we're going to waive your application fee. So go ahead and get started if you haven't already. Uh, we do want to encourage you there. Uh, right now, and too, I wanted to back up and say something about the financial aid. Sometimes there's a confusion about in-state, out-of-state tuition. Remember, with King, it is the same across the board, and we have deeply discounted uh, our working adult programs uh, just to help remove one of those barriers to help you get started. So just, uh, you know, Sometimes there's confusion about that, and if you're listening, you might think that that's, that applies to us. It does not. It's the same for everyone. Um, again, to apply, apply.king.edu, and then just follow up with your, your transcripts. That's really all you need to do at this point, and we'll follow up with you. So, uh, again, thank you for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. It's been our pleasure, and we hope that you'll reach back out. I, get, I, I sent my email address out there. You need to follow up with any questions. Thank you, especially to our former students who came and helped us out tonight. Kay and Basha, we really appreciate you as well. And uh, it's great to see the great things that our alumni are doing and just stay connected with us, okay? Okay, thank you, Mona. Uh, all righty, um, any other questions, concerns? 
Yeah. I don't see anything on the chat box right now. So and does anyone have a question that we didn't answer perhaps? Mm -hmm. All right. Again, thank you, Kay and Vasha. It's great to see you both again. Um, you're both tremendously successful, and we love to hear those success stories. So congratulations on all that you have accomplished. And we all really appreciate your time. And thank you, Dr. Knight and Mona, for all that you added. And I'm going to add my email and phone number to the text box so that if anyone has any questions, feel free to call me. We can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, meeting, another Zoom meeting, email, whatever your preferred communication method is. We are there to answer those questions. There's my email and phone number. And we're right at 7.01, so there's our 30 minutes. Again, thank you all. It's great to see you. And if no one has any conclusions, any questions then this concludes our meeting yeah it doesn't have to end here continue asking those questions and reaching out to us we're happy to answer any of those thank you again